you don't recognize this? Well, maybe you recognize this side of it. That's the dashboard out of the Celica, and tied to it is the entire wiring harness out of the Celica. Uh, everything, well, almost everything. I have engine wiring harness. Engine computer, I've got two of them, one for automatic, one for standard. This, most of you can imagine there's going to be some problems with because this originally sat near the front of the car, the engine was right here. Now the engine is way back there, so I have to make a decision on where do I extend this wire and harness out at so that it reaches everything. First thing I'm going to have to do is stretch it all out, figure out what I need, what I don't need. Um, I'm not going to be running air conditioning, heater, stuff like that, so wires like that can go. I'm going to need all the light wiring, uh, all the engine wiring, of course, I'll need. And once I figure out what I can get away with out having, then it's a matter of whether I stretch the engine wiring harness out to reach the computer in the front or whether I stretch the wiring harness from where the gauges, ignition and things like that are to reach the computer and keep the computer all the way at the back of the car. This could take a while. These few wires right here, this little bundle, that's all I'm gonna to have to lengthen. 50, 80 wires in there. This will have to be lengthened to go to the back of the car because the engine wiring harness plugs into this, which was originally underneath the hood, and this, which was originally underneath the hood, and these are the wires for the ECU. So I've made up my mind what I want to do. I'm going to lengthen the factory body wiring harness, leave all the engine wiring harness stock. This will all be routed down the middle. I have to figure out how long it has to be, so I'm going to have to lay it out in the car, see where everything has to be routed down the middle through the basically what would be called a transmission tunnel. Then it's just a matter of Cutting these wires off one at a time. Staggering the splices so I don't end up with a big ball. Cut them, solder splice, solder splice. About 50, 60 times. Should be a lot of fun. If automotive electricians had nightmares, is this what they'd be like? What a mess. This is the wiring harness spread out a little bit. I've got to go through all this and figure out what I need to keep. These are the wires that went to the kick panel on the passenger side. That's the right hand side of the car for us here in the States. These are the wires that went to the door. Power windows, power locks, that kind of stuff. Speakers, those wires will be taken out of the wiring harness. Give you some idea how many wires there are in your car. These are the wires that I'm going to be keeping. These go to the right front corner of the car. This is just what's in the right front fender of your car. 
This is things like the turn signals, headlights, side marker lights, windshield washer pump is also on this circuit. And that's just a little bit of what I have to do. And then I have to continue on through all of this. This is the stereo amplifier. All the wires for it will be removed. This is a grounding block. Some of these wires will be gone, some of them will stay. It's going to take a while. And then I'll get to do the same thing with the other side of the car. Still have wires that go to the steering column, turn signal, that kind of stuff. Instrument panel. When it gets real fun, it's going to be figuring out what goes to the body ECU what I need to keep and what I don't need to keep. There's just a few wires there. I'm sure this will be no problem figuring this out. Help. a lot of fun. There is absolutely no way of knowing how many hours this is going to take and uh, to be perfectly honest I'm not even going to try to keep track of it because I don't want to know how many hours I spend doing this. When I get done with this I believe it's going to be worth doing it this way because all the factory controls, steering column controls, all that will be there and everything that was integrated into the engine control unit will still be integrated into it. As long as I don't take the wrong wire out and throw it away. The squeamish among you may want to turn away now. Well, there's no turning back now. a little bit of an idea what I've got to do here, what I'm doing, and I'm probably not even a tenth of the way through it. Maybe a little more than that, I don't know. Got a lot to work with right here. A lot of wires that I've already pulled out. I already see it. cut a couple of them completely out. And once I get this wire removal done, 
then it'll become uh, making it fit the car, lengthening the wires where they need to be lengthened, shortening wires, but we hopefully it still runs when I get all this done. So after about an hour and a half of messing around, I figured out where I'm going to put my circuit breaker fuse box and my computer for the engine. Um, got a bunch of clamps in here holding it in place. It's not exactly perfectly square right now, but I'll get it all squared up, build some brackets for it. The uh, battery's going to go right here. Of course, this steering rack is going to disappear. Um, I've got another video on the no steer box that I eliminate this with. Battery right there. Should work out pretty good, I think. So to figure out how long I need my wiring, I've kind of routed it through approximately where it's going to be. Brought my uh, fuse and relay panels up to where they, about where they're going to sit. And once I have the approximate position of the relay box and all that figured out, then I can figure out where I'm going to route it. What looks like a good spot is under through the intake, right up to here. And using this little strap as a point on the wiring harness to measure from, I've made a mark right here on my chassis. And then from the mark here on the chassis, I'm going to run the wiring harness on down and across the bottom. Once it's routed down across the bottom, probably bring it across about this far forward, this is going to have to end up underneath the dash. Then I'll bring this forward to its approximate location under the dash, somewhere in here. And using the same wiring harness clip, I figured out when I get that up there, it'll be right there at that mark. So I'll measure from this mark all the way back where the wiring harness has to run, figure out how long I have to make the extension. And a couple measurements and a little bit of math comes out to exactly six feet that I need to lengthen the wiring harness. Sixty-eight wires. That includes the one that goes back and forth through here a couple times. I don't know why. Anyway, I set these points up so six feet going all the way around. So now all I have to do is solder it onto a wire, heat shrink it, loop it over that, bring it on around, solder the other end. 68 times, well 65, six times. Anyway, long process. All right, well, one wire down, 67 wires to go. Uh, a lot of the wires are gonna be recycled wire that I took out of the wiring harness, but I'm gonna have to order some wire because there's some heavy gauge wire in here, main power feed that it, I'm not gonna have out of recycled wire.
what we have here is a completed extended wiring harness, ready to be taken off the bench. Just temporarily taped together. I don't have enough wiring loom to go over the whole length of it. I've got some on order. There it is. All right, there's a wiring harness in it, and this is the first attempt at trying to see if there's any life in it, like if I get it crank over. close by. Fuel tank is right there because that's where the wires will reach and still be able to get it on a table or something near the car. And that's where the original fuel line will reach and connect to the motor. So I've poured a couple gallons of fuel in it. I have flushed a little bit of fuel through the line and I'm going to give it a couple attempts at starting. What I'm going to do is as soon as it starts, I'm going to cut it back off because it's almost 9 o'clock at night and I'm sure my neighbors are going to love this. As a matter of fact, before I hit the starter, I'm going to close some doors. came out of a wrecked car so I had to replace a damaged relay and a couple burnout fuses so after a couple hours of troubleshooting making sure I had everything grounded no loose wires uh, checking to see if I had power at the right places I unplugged the mass airflow sensor and with that unplugged and that's where I'm going to wrap it up for this video. The car doesn't have a cooling system on it, so all I can do is run it for a few seconds. Um, next video will probably be some of the troubleshooting and stuff of actually getting this thing to run. Uh, start More of a startup video. Uh, thanks for taking time to watch. Like, subscribe, hopefully sometime in the very near future, uh, two or three years from now, I'll get this thing on the ground and actually get it riding around. Um, wait a minute, the next video should probably be uh, cooling system and then the actual startup and running so I can keep things in the order that they actually happened. <laughs>